Hi guys, we're back with sessions 30. Today we're going to talk about dehydration. What is it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now dehydration might be caused by many different variables. If you will take the trouble to go to dearnurses.com and read dehydration, what is it? This should be very helpful in letting you find out all the causes of dehydration, or quite a few of them anyway. And there is another, you may find also related topics when natural disaster strikes Haiti at dearnurses.net. This will also be very helpful in teaching you more about what could lead to dehydration. Now, we know that Port-au-Prince, Haiti suffered a massive earthquake in January 12, on January the 12th, 2010. An earthquake, as you know, is very, I mean, there's just not words to describe what a devastation it must have been for the people involved. People were trapped under rubble. There were many people just left in a situation where they, even though they were not trapped under rubble, there was no food, no water. And so some people became severely dehydrated, not to speak of the ones who were trapped under the rubble. Dehydration may be caused by these are not the only ones, but these are the main causes. Excessive sweating might cause dehydration, trauma, vomiting, diarrhea, burns, heat exhaustion, hyponatremia, which means high sodium, surgical intervention, like the patient who's gone to surgery and been waiting a long time, you know, been fasting and had a late surgery. Yes, they get fluids, but it collectively it's just not enough, so they become dehydrated. Diabetes insipidus, not to be confused with diabetes mellitus. Diabetes ketoacidosis, known as DKA. And what does happen as a result of dehydration? Patients may become, they may suffer electrolyte imbalances, hypovolemic shock, hypotension, problems with their oxygen saturation, mental confusion. And if you want to find out more about this topic, like I said, do go to dearnurses.com and read dehydration, what is it? Also want you to know, dehydration can be explained as simply as if you have a grape, you can see that it's full of water. Take that same grape when it's been dehydrated and what do you see? A raisin. Well, that's pretty much what happens to the body when the fluid start in your body starts going away. You become almost like a raisin. Some of the things we will discuss here, but like I said, you can go to uh, when natural disaster strikes at dearnurses.net or you can go to dehydration, what is it, at dearnurses.com and learn more. The trauma patient is always at risk for dehydration and subsequently hypovolemic shock due to massive blood loss. And of course, what would you expect to find in these patients? Well, you can get rapid respirations, a decrease in blood pressure, rapid heart rate, cool, clammy skin, loss of consciousness, oxygen saturation is also affected. Usually what happens to these patients, they give them IV fluids and blood products to improve their uh, hydration. Next we have the people who go out in the outdoors. Some people like the outdoors. Some people are not familiar with uh, the desert climate when you do not get you know that you're sweating, they're not aware that you're sweating, but it's not obvious like when you're in a humid climate. Swe sweating can be very subtle and consequently these patients can wind up being dehydrated and having electrolyte imbalance. So here are some of the ways water, salt, sports drinks, sometimes they have them all ready to go with all the electrolytes that you might need, wearing light clothing, covering your head, and uh, bananas are supposed to be very good to uh, help with potassium. <clears throat> now let's take the case of these two patients. The one here is, uh, has had several bouts of diarrhea, beginning to feel weak and tired. Why? Naturally this patient is beginning to show signs of dehydration. Then takes this other patient here who is in uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Some of the symptoms, signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis, you have a patient who's got rapid heart rate, his breath has a very distinct odor, fret, what you call a fruity breath, the face is very warm and flushed, very high blood glucose, 
blood glucose sometimes as high as 600. And of course, this affects the level of consciousness. Respirations are very rapid. So to learn more about this topic, about diabetic ketoacidosis, please go to dearnurses.com and read uh, about diabetic care in the clinical assessment, volume one. Hope you've learned something from this today and stay posted for more clinical issues. Have a great weekend.